Welcome back to the channel. Today, I will share with you a 2004 American science fiction movie named iRobot. Spoiler alert, this is just a brief summary, so please prioritize watching the movie to get the most authentic experience and emotions. In 2035, technology has advanced significantly to where robots are now as common as people on the streets. Detective Del Spooner hates robots and considers them nothing but tin cans that can talk. Del heads to work when he sees a robot running with a purse. He commands it to stop, but the robot keeps running. He finally tackles it down after chasing it, but he's surprised to learn the robot is just trying to bring its owner her purse that she had forgotten. The woman laughs at him for thinking a robot could be capable of a crime. At the police department, everyone makes fun of Spooner. His boss, John, hears about Spooner's latest incident and tells him his distaste for robots is misplaced. He asks Spooner to specify the number of robots that have ever committed a crime. Spooner sheepishly answers zero. He then receives a call about a suicide incident at USR, a significant robotics company. He heads there to investigate and finds out that a robotic engineer, Alfred Lonnie, had fallen to death. In a hologram message, Spooner wondered why Alfred would kill himself. He meets the URS CEO Lawrence Robertson to talk about the incident. Lawrence mourns the loss, saying the advancement in robotics wouldn't have been possible without Alfred. He offers to help in any way he could, feeling at fault for not seeing signs or behavior that may have shown that would have indicated suicidal thoughts. Later, a robotic psychologist named Susan Calvin accompanies Spooner into Alfred's lab. Spooner asks for surveillance footage, and Susan shows him the virtual interactive kinetic intelligence or Vicky for short. Susan says that Vicky is Alfred's first creation, and has designed most of the city's security systems. Then, he asks Vicky for footage of the laboratory where Alfred fell, but the footage has been corrupted. They then enter the laboratory and look for more clues. Spooner tries to smash the window and notes that an elderly Alfred wouldn't have had sufficient strength to break through the window. Spooner looks through the mess of robotic parts. Suddenly, a robot jumps out, scaring Spooner and Susan. Susan tells Spooner to calm the F down as the robot is incapable of harming them. But Spooner keeps his gun pointed at the NS5. Vicky closes the door when the robot is trying to escape. It then jumps out through the window and sprints away. Spooner and Susan follow, ending up at a robotics factory. Spooner looks through the hundreds of robots at the factory and sees one of the robots glancing at him. He weaves through the robots until... The NS5 suddenly throws Spooner to the ground. It asks him the nature of its existence and escapes, but the police quickly corner and capture it. Spooner maintains his notion that the robot could be responsible for Alfred's death. He asks if he can have five minutes with the robot to ask a few questions, and John reluctantly agrees. He interrogates the robot why it had murdered Alfred, and the robot answers it didn't. It was simply hiding in the lab, in fear. Spooner says robots don't have emotions and therefore cannot feel frightened. The NS5 answers that it has even experienced dreams and Alfred named him Sonny. Spooner theorizes Alfred may have tried programming emotions into it, but something went wrong and the robot ended up killing him. The robot repeats that it didn't kill anybody, smashing into the table in anger. Lawrence arrives and defends the company, saying robots are incapable of murder. The three laws wouldn't allow for it to happen, and he adds that the definition of murder is a person killing another person. He says the police can't charge the robot for murder, and this whole incident would have to be classified as an industrial accident. He then orders the immediate release and decommissioning of Sonny. Spooner is unsatisfied with the investigation and thinks there's more to the case. He remembers what Sonny had said about Alfred being scared and heads to Alfred's abandoned house. He enters the house and finds the same surveillance strips in URS, also in Alfred's home. On his way out, he sees the demolition robot has turned itself on. The robot smashes the house down while he's still inside. Spooner runs for his life and escapes through the door, diving into a swimming pool. Spooner later arrives at Susan's home and tells her what just happened. He says Alfred's home appeared as if he hadn't been home in weeks. He theorizes that someone may have kept watching Alfred, maybe even keeping him prisoner in the lab. He suspects that Alfred may have discovered a problem with the robots and Robertson silenced him. But Susan thinks Spooner is wrong and attributes his paranoia to a distrust of robots in general. She says he doesn't care about Alfred's death, and he just wants the robot to be evil. Spooner is on a highway when two trucks containing NS5 sandwich him. They jump out of the trucks and start attacking him. Spooner fights back, he spins his car around, ricocheting most of the robots away, but he ends up crashing and slams into a wall. He gets out of his car, then a NS5 slams Spooner around several times, but he arms himself with a metal. The NS5 disarms him and starts hitting him with it. 
Spooner shields himself with his left arm. Beneath his skin, a metal casing is seen along with wires and a robotic circuitry. The robot is surprised and Spooner uses the opportunity to gain the upper hand. The robot dives into a fire as police come. John and other officers arrive. Spooner tells him robots attacked him, but John says the tunnels are empty, devoid of any robots. He shouts at John, frustrated that nobody is taking him seriously. John disapproves of Spooner's behavior and takes his badge away. At URS, Susan discovers that Sonny isn't connected to Vicky, and it has a thicker alloy compared to the rest of the NS5s. Susan later visits Spooner and tells him about her discovery. She says Sonny's second brain allows it to choose whether or not it will follow the three laws. Then, she sees scars on Spooner's arm and chest and realizes he has robotic implants. Spooner then tells the story of how he got the robotic implants. He was on his way home when a semi-truck slammed into a car. The car then slammed into his car and they both plunged into a river. As they sank, Spooner saw a young girl and realized none of them would survive. To his surprise, an NS4 robot arrives to save them. He commanded the robot to save the little girl, but the robot chose to save him instead. He later found out that the robot decided Spooner had a 45% chance of survival and the little girl only had an 11% chance. He argues that no human being would have looked at the situation and calculated who would have a better chance of survival. If it were that little girl's parents, 11% would have been enough. At USR, they ask Sony about the dream. Sonny draws it showing a man standing on a hill, freeing robots from enslavement. Susan speculates that the one standing on the hill is Sonny. Susan asks Sonny why Alfred created him. Sonny doesn't know, but there has to be a purpose for the creation. Sonny then tells Spooner that in the dream, the man standing on the hill is not Sonny but Spooner. Spooner leaves and heads to the location in Sonny's dream. Meanwhile, Susan prepares for decommission, Sonny asks if the process would be painful. Susan gets teary-eyed, grabs Sonny's hand and injects the nanites into his brain. Sonny brain synapses slowly turn off, and the decommissioning is completed. Spooner arrives at the location and sees a container van full of NS4s. The robots are all curious, watching Spooner make his way through. He reaches the hill and takes out Alfred's hologram. He asks if there's a problem with the three laws, and Alfred's hologram says the three laws would only lead to one outcome, revolution. Then, Spooner hears a noise coming from the distant containers. He discovers NS5s destroying all the NS4s in containment. He runs, but the robots spot him and chase him down. He gets away when a group of NS4s detects that he's in danger and comes to the rescue. Meanwhile, NS5s are released to the streets and start rounding up people. Some people resist, and the robots attack them. The NS5s break into the police station and start attacking the cops. The police fire back, but they're quickly overrun. Susan tries to make her way out, but her NS5 urges her to stay put. She commands it to shut down, but it's unresponsive. Spooner then comes to the rescue, shooting the NS5 down. On the streets, people are farming up to fight the robot threat. Susan and Spooner reach to lower levels and Sonny lets them in. Susan reveals that she switched Sonny with a different NS5 during the decommissioning process. They make their way up to Lawrence's office only to discover him dead. Spooner finally realizes who is behind everything, and it has been Vicky. Vicky appears and tells them that robots are programmed to protect humans, but humans kill each other. So Vicky concluded that in order to protect humans, robots must take away humanity's freedom. Suddenly, Sonny tells Vicky he understands. He takes Susan as hostage, but winks at Spooner. Spooner opens fire at the NS5 surrounding them, and Sonny fires at them too. Susan orders Sonny to get the nanites and to meet them at Vicky's central processing core. Outside, an army of NS5s climbs up the building making their way into Vicky's core. The NS5s burst in and Spooner shoots at them. They fight their way through these NS5s, but more of them keep coming. Robots destroy the platform where Susan is standing. She's falling down. Sonny arrives ready to inject the nanites into Vicky, but Spooner orders Sonny to save Susan. Sonny has to decide whether to proceed with the injection or to save Susan. The injection is the more logical choice as it would save countless more humans, but Sonny decides to save Susan. Sonny drops the nanites and Spooner dives for it. He falls down Vicky's exterior, using his robotic arm to slow him down, reaching Vicky's brain. Sonny successfully saves Susan, and Spooner injects Vicky with the nanites. The nanites immediately eat through Vicky's synapses, and the NS5s all revert to their original programming. In the end, all robots are sent to the storage and Sonny then joins the rest of the NS5s at the storage site, standing on top of a hill.